Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you the replay of game 2 in a best of 3 between Fusil and Player in the final of Herr Roberts Grand Tournament. So, due to the last game that I showed you guys being a draw, Fusil and Player do have to replay the second game and that's what we're going to be seeing. And due to the rules of the tournament, it's going to be the same map and the same division. So Colin Bell, allied side is Fusil with the 15th Infantry Scots, and Axis side is player with the 1st SS Panzer. Now I think this is quite a unique opportunity that we don't get to see very often, and that is two players going up against each other with exactly the same variables two times around, and getting the chance to see how they adapt their strategies in order to make the game a little bit different or maybe more in their favour. It's something that we can definitely analyse a lot in order to see where players can improve on their previous, previous performance. So 15th Infantry, last time around we saw an AVRE push which was relatively successful. It made a bit of ground on the top side of the map and it basically was there to kind of bounce that Stug 3 and it did a good job of that. The AVRE was just a great distraction that, that, the, AV, that the Stug 3 could, just couldn't deal with at that range. And that's something that um, a yeah, player definitely struggled with. And then Fusil backed it up with the 6-pounder, which I think was quite a nice idea. And then, unfortunately, the 6-pounder failed to, to kill the Stug 3 efficiently. But there was a lot of that throughout that game, uh, a lot of times when I think there should have been kills and there weren't. And that it definitely extended the life of the game and the amount of units that were, that were on the field. Um, this time around, I think Fusil would do much better to rely more on Churchill 5s supported by 6-pounders. Because there's not actually too much that the first SS can use to counter six pounders if they're supported by a 1,200 meter range Churchill. So, for example, player will have access to IGs, and those can be used to to counter six pounders if an AVRE is used because an AVRE has 600 meters, so it doesn't have the range to count to cover a 1,000 meter range IG18. Um, the other thing that uh, player has is just like an abundance of, of Stugs and infantry, right? And I think the Churchills do a good job of staying out of range of the Stugs whilst also managing to cover the infantry, which then enables the six pounders to take on the Stugs, eventually leaving a Churchill five with a, you know, a turkey shoot basically. So that I, I believe is, is a better combination, but we'll have to wait and see what Fizzle is actually putting down. On the side of player, his push was double Stug. He had one on the top side, one on the bottom side. Strong uh, push with infantry into the factory. And honestly, it's looking like he's going to do a very similar thing in this game. Let's have a look at the exact units that are being deployed. So on the side of Fusil, he has put down one unit of rifles, two units of Bren Group and Command Carrier on the top side, which is slightly different to what he did on this area of the map in the last game. This time around, it looks like a stronger push into the factory. Three rifles, one Bren group, command carrier with command infantry, AVRE again, supported by a two inch carrier this time, and there's also a Piat in there with the MG carrier. Further down, it's going to be two units of Bren group. So, an interesting tactic for Fusil, going to try and dominate this factory with the AVRE support, which could work out well, but is definitely inviting the Stugs to get kills at close range, where before they were struggling to because of the range. So that's certainly an interesting strategy and no AT guns from the start, which I think is a very bad mistake against the first SS. On the side of player, on the bottom side, it's going to be the SBW222 with the recon. We see the Flampanzer supported by a Sturm Pioneer, some command, there's going to be the Volksdeutsche, of course, two sets of those, and an MG, with the Stug 3 backing it all up. For the top side, it's going to be Volksdeutsche, Pioneerführer, and the Stug 3. And surprised to see the Stug 3 just up here on its own. I think it may be better to concentrate the Stug sometimes, 
Um, especially if you could just put a couple of Folkstoger up here and just cover that ground. Because I don't think it's ever worth investing over 100 points unless it's 200 or 300 points into a certain area at the start of the game. You're better off putting your eggs in one basket and trying to make a push if that's your strategy rather than spacing it out because I feel like that Stug's not really going to do too much throughout this game. Anyway, um, let's keep an eye on this factory engagement. Both players deploying relatively aggressively. Fusil definitely so. Moving all the way up to these buildings but knows he can do so covered by the smoke. So a smart move from Fusil early on. Bren Group going to be engaging the Volksdeutsche. Probably won't last long in the face of a Stug 3. And if they leave the building, then they will probably be cut down by the MG. So those Bren Group can say bye-bye. Stern Pioneers going to have to back off from that engagement. That's two units of two-star rifles. And they can do a lot of damage at close range. They do have 8 HE at their disposal. And the Stern Pioneers do suffer with the the range sometimes if it the range is too short or the flamethrower is going to affect themselves they don't actually use it but a smart kill here by Fusil uses the AVRE to delete the uh, Flampanzer early on actually pins down the Volksdeutsche in the process fortunate for player that the Pioneer Fjord did not get affected that by that and therefore this infantry cannot be surrendered for now also the Pioneer Fjord can hold off against uh, these rifles should they get aggressive due to it having the HE grenade. Stug 3 does find the quick kill onto the MMG carrier. The 222 is going to try and take advantage of the salient on the bottom side of the factory. There isn't really much to stop it. This could definitely do a lot of work. It could drive up into the factory, kill the 2-inch carrier and command carrier. It could drive down, cut off the units that Fusil is using to hold here. There's a lot of things that 222 could do, so be interesting to keep an eye on that but this Stug 3 killing the AVRE is something that I'm kind of seeing in a premonition it really depends whether or not Fusil can keep his smoke cover intact because I, as, I feel as soon as that sort of disappears the Stug 3 at that range will definitely penetrate an AVRE if it gets a shot on target Smart moves by player though, keeping his units on return fire until they recover. But Piat has been launched. Will it hit the Stug 3? Yes, it will. Piat, can it hit with a second shot? Engine destroyed, has all day. Does actually miss the static target a second time round. And the AVRE comes in with a huge spick of mortar. Blows the crap out of the Stug there. So actually happened the other way around. Stug 3 ends up going down in the face of the AVRE and that allows the AVRE to do a lot of work here but might need to be careful not to let the Volksdeutsche get it too close with the Panzerfaust. Uh, players taking advantage of the smoke that the Sturm Pioneers dropped here to advance quite aggressively. We can see that out of the initial starting units there is like one rifle already been killed um, and of course the Bren group got killed on the bottom side of the factory. Now the Pioneer Fjord take out the command. That is pretty significant actually because it means if future units like these rifles get pinned down, they are in a tough spot and have the potential to be surrendered. Like I mentioned on the top side, the Stug 3 doesn't really seem to be doing too much. It doesn't have the support it really needs and now is going to be moved down to the factory. So just having that at the factory at the, in the first place probably would have been a better idea. Because uh, then he would have had the double prong attack onto the AVRE that, uh, once again, Fusil has invested upon. He is actually using a fire position here next to the building. I think he wants to keep the Volksdeutsche pinned down so the, the rifles can move forwards and take care of that. Uh, this Flampanzer, there's a potential that it could be killed by the 50 meter grenades if it's not too careful. Since these rifles uh, can definitely get the job done. But Flampanzer instead is just going to come in and hit the command carrier. But JU87G takes out the 2-inch carrier. I think that took out the honey on the bottom side as well. That was trying to cover off against the 222. So smart move by the, by player once again. Unfortunate for him that he couldn't get the hit onto the AVRE or the angle for that. Probably something that he would have liked to have done, but... Didn't want to tempt fate. It's going to get the JU-87 out of there before Fusil decides to invest in a Spitfire. So the Honey trying to clean up the Flampanzer. That's been brought in as reinforcement behind the factory here. 
Stug 3, though, may, may be able to head that off. But uh, player now taking advantage of the death of that honey, destroys one of the Bren group, is going to try and break through once again. Now, I was actually quite surprised about the movement of this 2-2-2. I feel like it could have been uh, exploited much more, its position here, rather than sort of going back and down. I think maybe going behind the AVRE in the factory would have been a good shout. And Well, speaking of the factory, the folks are going to jump forward there, get the Panzerfaust shot off. I did mention the, the range being a little close for the AVRE, and there it seems as though it got punished for it. AVRE now using fire position in order to pin the Volkswagen as they fall back. So Fusil certainly on top of his micro, but having these rifles being fall, uh, like fallen back, it does sort of leave him prone to these Volkswagen until he can guarantee that they are dead. Honey does manage to clean up the Flam Panzer. We see the movement of these units on the bottom side now being covered off once again by a Honey. But it's going to be difficult for the Honey to get aggressive here due to the 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Being able to penetrate a Honey at close range quite convincingly. So Volksdeutsche, they have moved up. They are recovering their morale. There isn't really much that would stop them if they decided to jump forwards and attack the AVRE. But with the help of the Tripolstan, Bren Group manages to get rid of a unit of infantry there. Stug 3, is that going to get the job done? Yes, it will. Engine Destroy left that as a sitting duck, and the Stug 3 certainly makes it pay. 222 cleans up a unit of infantry on the bottom side of the factory, and things currently sitting in a plus one for player on and off, it seems. Oh dear. Is that the six pounder engaging the Stug 3? A bounce. It's actually a bounce onto the Stug 3. I cannot believe it. <laughs> Two star six pounder bounces off the Stug 3 at that range. Holy. Boozle has been megaly disappointed with his six pounders throughout <laughs> these games. Holy. That is not something you see very often. I, I think players definitely got away with that one. Has brought in another Stug 3 to the top side now. Is going to be bringing in some MG support. In general, has a pretty nice position here. Managed to get some Panzer Grenadiers up. And those are going to be able to do a lot of damage to the rifles, to the 6-pounder, to the Piet. And if the Piet and the 6-pounder get taken care of, then the Stug 3 is free to just push on through. And that's something I'm sure player will take advantage of. Now on the bottom side, Fusil's going to try and make back some ground. We see him bring in the rifles. Going to move those into the tree line first, so that he doesn't get taken out by the Volksdeutsche here. But the trouble is, the 222 can do a lot of damage to the rifles if it wants to. And, well, that's actually going to cause these rifles to surrender, surely, yeah. Six pounder now un in trouble as well as the MG continues to open up, but with the Volksdeutsche being pinned down without command nearby, Honey's going to return the favour. This six pounder still in trouble. Panzer Grenadiers currently trying to do damage to both the six pounder and the rifles. The Tripolstin actually managed to do a lot of morale damage to the Stug 3. Meanwhile, on the top side, Pioneer Fjord are now engaging the rifles. We'll be able to get a grenade off there, which should do quite a bit of damage, but not sure if it's going to kill off the entire squad. Or oh, JU87 though, on the bottom side, coming in once again, this time hit by the Tripolstin. The Tripolstin was brought in to stop that happening, but the JU87 still broke through and found one kill. Spitfire Mark 9 should manage to reply, and will do, and both players definitely trading blows, with Fusil finding a little bit of a salient up here. Pioneer Fiore does clean up one rifle, gets killed by the other. This rifle now being pinned down by the Stug. Going to be responded to by the Volksdeutsche and the SDK of Z7 II. And I can't help but feel that this game is certainly one that is similar to the last in that both players just responding to each other's aggression quite well. However, Fusil definitely has lost uh, more significant units and that Stug 3 winning the engagements against the Honey is pretty significant indeed. Hands are going to deer, get the machine gun fire onto the Tripolstan as well, which is going to pin that, allow the Stug 3 to get shots in. This could turn very ugly 
for Fusil very quickly. 222 takes out the MMG carrier there. That's going to allow the 251 and 222 to get aggressive once again, like with the honeys not in support. Fusil leaves himself in a pretty tough spot. Like the six pounder that was in the factory is dead. The six pounder, it's struggling to know whether to go down or up. It's got the target of the Stug 3, of course, but it does want to clean up these 222 and 251 so the rifles can control that bottom side. It's not the end of the world since it's only a plus one for player, but if you look at the amount of units on the field for either player, it's definitely skewed in favor of player. Try Polston and the carrier go down. And, well, player is going to take full control of this factory. Fizzle's still got their front line held forwards due to the Bren group and his infantry play on the top side. This peer may be just what he needs to clean up uh, these units down here. But if this IG-18 has anything to say about it, that may not be the case. Doesn't look like it's going to happen this time around. I was half expecting the IG-18 to just one-shot that MMG carrier, but uh, yeah, didn't this time around. So... Moving into phase B, what can either player do? It's 130 points a minute now for player. He does have access to Panther Gs, and that could be something that he uses to definitely dominate this bottom side. He has the 251 and the 222 in a decent position here. The 251 goes down, but if a Panther gets up to this point, it can cover this reinforcement, reinforcing road on this bottom side, uh, which can make all the difference. But this 222, absolutely deadly at this range. Doing so much work, the Volksdeutsche, supported by the IG-18 as well. Player just has the perfect composition of units to really get the job done and is continuing to show that uh, throughout this game. Flampanzer going to be securing the factory. Bit of an odd choice considering he more or less already had control of the factory. It's not really going to help him get out of the factory. But an MG is a good shout because it can cover the open here and uh, can just dodge back if it needs to from any tank fire and so on the crocodile was the choice of unit that can definitely be useful at close range but i think it's going to struggle to come around the corner here and deal with Volksdeutsche because the Volksdeutsche can definitely pin down rifles in this tree line before the crocodile can make a move the ideal way to do it would be for fusil to maybe invest in like a 25 pounder so that he can pin the units on the other side of tree lines and then he can be a more aggressive with the crocodile because the crocodile and churchill 7 at this point can definitely put up a big fight against these stugs that players been relying on so much it's just that by doing so by putting emphasis onto the crocodiles and churchill 7s it will force player to invest in the panther and then that will definitely turn ugly for Fusil like it did in the last game where the Crocodiles and the Churchill 7 started going down left right and centre. So player has invested in a Vespa now. He has the tools he needs to take care of a T-Guns in the future. Now something he may take uh, use of or make make use of in his top side to clean up the 6 pounder and enable the Stug 3 to kill the command carrier. On the bottom side Volksdeutscher this is the engagement that I was talking about. Volksdeutscher and rifles. It looks like the crocodile is trying to use fire position to set this building alight. And that's actually a really smart move from Fusil, but isn't going to prevent the Volksdeutscher from just jumping back. He needs to pin these down before this crocodile can actually do anything. And with the IG-18 in support as well as the 222, those rifles really aren't going to make too much ground at the moment. Meanwhile, on the top side, Volksdeutscher pushing forwards. Reveal the rifle leader there. There's potential for the six pounder to get found by the MGs of that Volksdeutscher on the top side. But I'm just keeping an eye on the bottom side here as the Spitfire Mark 9 comes in. Didn't actually drop its bombs just yet. And the Volksdeutscher clean up the rifles there. So Crocodile's now going to attack move forwards. Surely the Volksdeutscher can jump in and get a Panzerfaust off there if it needs to. Bitfire Mark 9 is going to bomb the Stug 3. Going to try and remove that as a threat so the Crocodile can freely move round. The Stug 3 getting shots onto the command carrier. This bottom play here from the player 
It's it's he's playing on such a fine line. And I think Fusil's just had enough. But the Volk the Volk Soldier are in range, and it's gonna be an internal fire. Can the Volk Soldier be killed by the rifles? Player's gonna pull them back. Stugs are now gonna get aggressive. Rifles have actually been pinned down. Piet is gonna come in and try and deal with the 2-2-2, two, 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 but Fusil's now relying on a Piet, which is gonna miss. Can the Volksdeutscher take out the Piet? That's a possibility. Not gonna need to. Stug 3 gets the job done onto the Crocodile. Piet does kill the 2-2-2 two, two, two in the end. But that's gonna be it. Fusil surrenders. Just like that. Player takes the victory. And congratulations to him. He has just won Herr Robert's Grand Tournament. Takes home a cash prize. I didn't actually mention the prize previously. But he took home a cash prize, which is pretty awesome. I'm not entirely sure how much it was. I think it was around like $40, $50, something like that. So cracking job by a player. Wins in 15 minutes and 48 seconds in the replay of the second game to secure his victory. Awesome, awesome stuff. Well done by player. I think in that game, he just played more flawlessly than he did in the previous one. It, it's funny because both players were like, throwing the counters at each other fighting back and replying to each other's kills but in the end i think player just had that little bit more of finesse and micro that allowed him to find the significant kills he needed to for example that internal fire panzerfaust onto the crocodile at the end there was just Mainly because player kept that Volksdeutscher alive. He he made it so difficult to kill. Supported by the 222, supported by the IG-18. Really, really nice play to watch. Um, in the t uh, factory as well, using the smoke from the Stern Pioneers to sneak a couple of the, the infantry squads into the factory aggressively was a move I would have not made myself. And having done so, left Fusil in a really awkward position because he then only had one rifle squad that was going up against two squads. And um, that was something that player definitely took advantage of and then, and then initially enabled the first Panzerfaust to hit the AVRE and, of course, end and destroy it, which led to the kill onto that expensive unit. And picking off those units like that, especially with the JU-87 coming in again as well, picking off the honeys was really, really nice. And the, the first SS certainly has all the answers, but player played the division so damn well. So congratulations to him. Very well-deserved victory. Um, AVRE, of course, it did do work. Killed the Flampanzer, secured the kill onto the Stug 3. But these honeys, they really struggled. Um, didn't really do too much. He brought in three of them, and you can see that's the only kills they got, and that was the one that was behind the factory. Um, the other one didn't get any kills. The other two even. Spitfire Mark 9 did reply to the JU-87 eventually. And the Tripolston I think was a interesting choice. Not necessarily sure if it was needed. Since the Spitfire Mark 9 was in the air. And at, in Phase A. Um, the Spitfire Mark 9 doesn't have any fighters to worry about on the side of the first SS. Um, in terms of losses. We can see that the Stug um, did a little bit of work there to sort of support that this JU-87 finding the double honeys was very, very important. This 2-2-2 surviving for the majority of the game on the bottom side was such a pain for Fusil to deal with. Panzerjäger Stug again, AVRE and Crocodile kill <laughs> secured by the same Stug and the honey. That's crazy stuff. So there you have it. A nice quick game to finish, I guess, uh, but definitely showed plenty of skill on the side of player and shows us why he defeated all the other players in this tournament in order to become first place and uh, fantastic stuff. And that's it from me, really, and the coverage of Herr Robert's Grand Tournament. Thank you, of course, to Herr Robert for hosting the tournament and uh, sorting out all that stuff, um, making the sort of replays freely available. Thanks to all the players for doing that as well. I'm not really sure where I'm going to go next in terms of what tournament I'm going to cover, but uh, I'm sure you guys will find out soon enough. In the meantime, that's all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. 
Goodbye.